Well, I am just coming off of the Industrial Marketing Summit, which was held last week here in my hometown of Austin, Texas. And on today's episode, we're going to give you a sneak peek into what it was like to be an attendee at the conference. We'll highlight some of the keynotes and sessions and panels and talk about all the ways this community came together to support one another during the event. It was truly a unique time, and I can't wait to share more of it with you. Let's do this. Welcome to Content Marketing Engineered, your source for building trust and generating demand with technical content. Here is your host, Wendy Covey. Hi, and welcome to Content Marketing Engineered. On each episode, I'll break down an industry trend, challenge, or best practice in reaching technical audiences. You'll meet colleagues, friends, and clients of mine who will stop by to share their stories. And I hope that you leave each episode feeling inspired and ready to take action. Before we jump in, I'd like to give a brief shout out to my agency, True Marketing. True is a full service agency located in beautiful Austin, Texas, serving highly technical companies. For more information, visit truemarketing.com. And now on with our podcast. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Content Marketing Engineered. I'm joined today by Casey Tyring. She's a senior inbound marketing specialist at our own True Marketing, and I brought her on for the two of us to do a recap of last week's Industrial Marketing Summit, and we were just together in Austin. Casey, mm -hmm. so good to see you again. Yes, good to see you, and it refresh off the IMS, so I'm really excited to talk about it. Have you caught up with your sleep and your inbox? Yes. Sunday, I was just lounging around so I could take a breather. So yeah. Nice. Well, I was thrilled to see you have our whole team in town. It was so awesome. And um, I thought what we do today is just, you know, not everybody could be there. And I thought it would be fun to just walk through some of our favorite moments and takeaways and help people understand what the event was about, what some of the buzz was that we heard and saw <laughs> while we were there that they can perhaps take back to their jobs in industrial marketing and maybe consider attending next year, which would be really cool. Yes. Uh, well, Casey, you live in Chicago, so you, mm -hmm. you know, took the flight, a quick flight here to Austin and let's start off with your arrival. Uh, you know, I heard a lot of people say, I'm going straight to Franklin's or Terry Black's barbecue <laughs> and get my meat on, or I want to yeah. go under downtown. So, um, and, and I think when you landed, it was probably like, I don't know, 68 and sunny, like mm -hmm. beautiful weather. So yeah. what did you do? Yeah, I left Chicago. I think it was 35 degrees. And then we landed the weekend before and it was like 60 degrees. So we were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I can wear short sleeves. This is amazing. So, <laughs> um, we walked around Rainy Street, which is like a very, um, there's bars everywhere, live music everywhere. It felt very much like Nashville to me, but we spent some time um, bar crawling there on Saturday. I had to like explore before, like decompress before the event. So yeah. Went out there, did go to Terry Black's. That was delicious. We were Yum. so full after that. And then um, on Sunday, we had to work off on the Terry Black. So we walked around Lady Bird Lake, which was another beautiful day. So crowded. I guess everybody was out. But that's like a, I think it's 12 mile hike, but we did like a three the three mile loop. So yeah. 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 That's so fun and beautiful that I love mm -hmm. that area of downtown. Yes. Uh, well, cool. So then, of course, everybody started arriving. And mm -hmm. uh, at the end of this episode, I want to talk about your role because you played a pivotal role in putting this event together. So we will get to that. Um, but first, I thought we'd just talk about um, the sessions and the keynote mm -hmm. and, and all the different things we heard that day. So just diving right in, we started the summit with a keynote in which uh, Joe, Adam, and I collaborated on. So, um, and, and the purpose of that keynote was to set the tone for the day. So tell me some of your takeaways and yeah. did you take good notes? Yeah, it was. it is setting the tone for the keynote because for the rest of the day, um, I know you talked a lot about AI and some of the big search changes that are happening. So it was starting off the event with these are all the big things everybody is struggling with. No one has the right answer, but we're all experiencing the same struggle. So that's one of the best parts about the event was we were all marketers in the same industry struggling with the same thing. So I know you touched on in the keynote, which, by the way, felt very much like a TED talk. I was very inspired. 
And it wasn't just like a classroom, but um, yeah, you talked about AI, all the different ways that marketers can use AI other than just the generative content development, um, which I know most people, marketers start out thinking that's what it's used for. So um, AI is a tool for marketers and then search engine updates, which is constantly happening. Um, The search generative um, experience that Google is releasing and how that will affect content marketing in the future. But yeah, just letting everyone know right off the bat, these are like kind of the main things that most people are struggling with. And then throughout the day, we'll have some answers and some practitioners that know how to help you. Yeah. And you know, to me, I was there in the late nineties when (laughs) company websites first came about and imagine how transformative that was for marketing. And it feels like we're in that age right now with Mm -hmm. large language models, people searching in all different ways. Uh, They're not just going to Google anymore. Just feels like one of those transformational times. And I wanted to kind of shake people up a little bit and help them understand you can't ignore this. Like this is going to radically change how you do your job here forward. And so let's embrace change. Let's recognize it for what it is and lean in and learn. So I'm glad that, uh, that stuck with you. Uh, and, and Joe and Adam talked a lot about how industrial marketing is very hard, right? This isn't an easy industry. It's not easy to understand your business, the technology it offers to uh, connect with the engineer leadership who's very skeptical of marketing and uh, sees marketing as a cost center rather than something that could generate revenue. So mm-hmm. how can we you know, turn that on its head, help people understand the value of marketing? And then Adam talked about expanding marketing into promoting the company culture and uh, you know, all aspects of the company, not just your solutions that you offer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the event, I could see there were tons of different levels of marketers there. I was having conversations with people who really didn't know how to use AI at all, or that maybe they didn't even know where to start with um, collecting data or analyzing that data, all the way up to like the marketing executives who were trying to find buy-in with the other executives, get a seat at the table. So I think that was unique that there was just it was like the bosses brought their team with them, which was super nice. And then everyone's learning the same things. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I'm sure once we get into thinking about planning for the future, we might think about how we continue to have material for both, right? As part mm-hmm. of this event. Yes. Uh, well, the keynote was followed by this fantastic AI panel. So maybe we can touch mm-hmm. on that. It was moderated by James, what was James's last name? James Bokeman from Gorilla 76. Bokeman, that's right. And then there were two marketing practitioners, Jared Beasley and Carla Gregory that use AI every day mm-hmm. for their jobs. And a lot of the questions were very practical questions around like, how do, what do you use? Why do you use it? How do you use it? Like just getting tips and inspiration um, of how to use AI. And then Mm -hmm. we had a bit of a superstar also on the panel. Who is that Casey? Yeah, it was Chris Hull. He's the founder of Jasper. So we have, you know, an executive who founded this AI tool and then some practitioners that were actually using Jasper and other AI tools from day to day. So that was a really cool play to see how practitioners are using it. And then we would ask Chris, is this how you're seeing it? Is this how you're seeing everyone else on your tool using it? And yeah, so I really liked that perspective. Yeah. Any big takeaways you had from that panel, like specific things? I think the funniest most memorable part was when Carla was like, are you sure you're, are you, are you making sure you're saying please every time you're asking chat GPT for, or any of the other tools, because you have to be nice to the machines, get a good relationship with them. So that got a lot of laughs, but yeah, Jared Beasley, he's a one person marketing department. Um, He works with a lot of distributors and is tasked with writing technical content that he's like, you know, he's got so much to do. He can't know everything. So he used AI really well too. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I say thank you to Siri all the time. So <laughs> I'm glad to know I'm not the only one yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, and just hearing one, one thing that stuck with me is in, in, in my keynote, I had said something along the lines of treat AI, like your marketing intern, right? You wouldn't mm-hmm. turn all of marketing over to that intern. Right. And so it was repeated on the panel, but then Chris Hole was like, well, I think it was more like a co-pilot than an intern. Mm-hmm. I think it could do more than, than an intern would do. So yeah. 
uh, that stuck with me too. And, and he made a point about how in the future, we shouldn't need to have the role of prompt engineer or mm-hmm. have all of these best, best practices on prompting. That's the role of the application software right. that should be built upon the large language models, making the power of that computational model accessible to the marketing person without them having to turn into software engineer to extract whatever they need to do their job. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of his main points is, you know, he's, he's coming at it as the founder of a tool and everyone else is like, well, is your tool easy to use? Like we don't have time to learn AI or learn all these things. And that's what he explained, which was really helpful was like the tool is made for um, making marketers jobs easier, nothing more, nothing less. You don't have to learn all these different things. And then yeah, which is very valuable because marketers don't have any time. <laughs> no, yes, that that was definitely a key theme as we mm-hmm. talked to people throughout the day, right? Yes. Uh, so, exactly. so then after the morning panel, we split into two rooms. So there were dual tracks going yes. on at any given time. And it was so tough to pick <laughs> where to go every yeah. hour. I heard that, that common, very positive mm-hmm. complaint, if you mm-hmm. will. So tell me of what were a few of your favorite sessions and why? Well, the one I felt that too, everybody was saying, how can I choose? How can I choose? People were pulling me aside and like asking me, you know, if I want to create a strategy for my marketing in 2024, which sessions should I go to? So I'm like picking out some for everyone, but um, I didn't go to Dale Bertrand's session. He did AI and SEO, which was right after the AI panel. So everyone is very jazzed about that, but I've heard that session before in previous marketing conferences. So that one was really good. He's very advanced on how he's using AI right now. And he has an agency called Fire and Spark, which is an SEO agency. So he's using AI in his SEO practice. But um, that one was really interesting, just how he's using it other than content generation. I know he's recording his call, like his sales calls and his other presentations. And then the AI is generating it into other content and repurposing it. So that was unique. The one I went to, I think it was during that time was John Joyce and it was machine efficiency and creativity. I think I'm similar to that title, but it was all about how you can be personalized in marketing, especially B2B marketing um, and do it at scale but, you know, that can be tricky. Like if you want to do personalization at scale, you, there's a lot of room for error. So how exactly can you get that right? He walked through like HubSpot tools, HubSpot um, cadences. And one thing, this is just like a small takeaway that I was like, that is really smart, is like say someone downloads a gated asset, a white paper or an ebook. Usually most marketers will send a follow-up email right away, like within 30 seconds. Thank you so much for your download of this CAD drawing. Like, do you want any more information? Well, if you are a human, you don't follow up in in 30 seconds. You may follow up in a day. So he delays his thank you response by a day. So it's little human touches that are really nice. Yeah, that is nice. And he, he, I, I like John because the title of that session describes him as a person too, right? He has mm-hmm. this very analytical sort of engineering yes. side to him and then this very creative side. And mm-hmm. you can figure that out by having, you know, uh, sitting out at lunch with him and yes. quickly go. A 10 know. second conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I don't know if this was during his presentation or I can't remember which, but uh, Gorilla76 walked through a campaign and um, talked about how many times marketers feel the pressure to produce results immediately. And Mm -hmm. it's difficult because you want to think through a strategy and think through messaging and, and do things right. But yet, Sometimes, you know, businesses are bleeding and they need leads and they need, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, momentum right away. And so they had taken the concept of MVP. So minimum, what was it? Oh, now I'm going to forget a minimum (laughs) viable product. So Mm -hmm. that's a concept from the software world. And so what is the, the, the least we can do to start getting results while we're building up the strategy, Mm -hmm. you know, honing the message and stuff like that. So how do we get results quickly? And then how do we iterate on that as we go? And so I, that MVP really stuck with me. So minimal, uh, viable products. So for them, that was often let's 
turn to advertising. So maybe Google AdWords or LinkedIn mm -hmm. on what we suspect are going to be the right key terms and the right message and sort of use that as a test and as at least something to get momentum while we're going back and, and developing the strategy. Yeah. Well, in the background, working on your huge campaigns that you know are going to pay off, but they take way more time to build. Yeah. I like that. Especially if you have executives breathing down your neck, like where are the leads? Where are the leads? Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, exactly. And then I went to two sessions, both on brand positioning and messaging, but they came at different angles. So MJ presented and, and she was coming from the perspective of a product marketer mm -hmm. and walking in a product marketer's shoes. Um, but what stuck with me about hers is she said, what does the CMO care about? What is the business executive? Yeah. It was a CEO care about, right? Mm -hmm. And they care about telling their story in a way that will raise funding or, um, you know, translate into business articles or whatever that high level thing is, and then how to create that message for them. And then what are the downstream messages from that, that we need to create? Mm -hmm. So yeah. she showed a lot of, you know, different frameworking and exercises to get at that value proposition. Yes. Did you yeah. go to that one? Yes. And she, I have to commend all the speakers because they gave really actionable takeaways. Like any marketer can jot down the same prompts that she did. And so she would do kind of like a Mad Libs thing where I don't remember the phrase, but it was, it was building how to create your messaging. And she had a, this problem is this, and this is how we solve this problem. And it was just like, you could copy and paste it, put in your own product and your own buyer's problems and, and have a starting point for your messaging. So yeah, I did go to that one. Yeah. And then Morgan Norris uh, from True Marketing also uh, presented on branding, but she was coming at it a little bit differently. And, and one of her pieces was on voice of customer and how to incorporate those messages uh, or the, that feedback into your messaging. And so she would have examples of the voice of customer interview person said X, and then here's how we message that into Y. Nice. And I uh, thought that was pretty cool. And then how to bring in personas to your messaging. So both yeah. of those were really interesting to me. Yeah, they were both brand messaging um, se sessions. And they both talk so much about interviewing customers. The voice of customer interviews is like, how do we, because as marketers, you often just think you know what the messaging should mean or what the customer wants, but they both have been so successful on actually interviewing the customer and getting really good results from that. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, did you catch uh, Mary Kehoe's presentation on sales enablement? I didn't. That one was didn't so popular. Darn it. I know that one got really, really popular. So I poked into the other room. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, and then I think think I saw you in the audience during my and CJ's presentation, yes, CJ yes. from Global Spec on our research report. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That was full of insights. I got a lot of feedback from that one. Um, just it's, it wasn't surprising. I think a lot of people were getting this inkling the big takeaway. I don't know exactly the percentage, but it's like 67% of the buyer's journey, especially a technical buyer or an engineer who's looking for a solution is online before they go to a salesperson. So 67% of that is digital marketing and making sure your website has the correct flow or um, content marketing. They have the right content available for anyone who's looking for um, solutions, but Everybody in that room, it was very um, like there was a lot of conversation happening about, yeah, yeah, I understand. And even had other resources. I'm thinking of how they talked about Gartner was also yeah. saying. Yeah. It's and there, there was a mad dash to figure out yeah. which is the right Gardner study and when. And and so now I, I have some of those in my arsenal for um for an upcoming webinar. So uh yeah. So those listening, if you haven't seen it yet, the 2024 State of Marketing to Engineers research is out. And mm -hmm. so you can go download it from the True Marketing website. Go for it. It is there, ready to uh, mm -hmm. ready to ready to go, ready to go. Um, okay. So after the sessions, then we ended the day, we came all together in a uh, back in a room and there was this amazing branding panel. It was facilitated by Chris Lukey and we had Nikki Gonzalez, Jordan Yates, and Eddie Saunders, all three of which have really strong personal brands and have mm -hmm. worked in the industrial industry. And so together they were able to talk about this intersection of personal and corporate branding. Uh, what did you think about that panel? 
I am so happy that they all could join us. That was very exciting. Everybody was such a fan of Chris Lukey with his manufacturing happy hour. People listen to Nikki Gonzalez's Automation Ladies podcast. Um, Jordan Yates has a very strong personal brand on LinkedIn, and she has her own podcast and YouTube channel that has a ton of audience. And so does Eddie Saunders with all of his activities that he's doing. So everyone knew, most people knew who they were going into it. They had a big fan base there. So it was really nice to talk to them about personal branding and how that affects, you know, some of these people have jobs within one company, yet they are one brand themselves. So it was unique to see their struggles on like, how can the brand, the company take advantage of a strong personal brand? And then what are some of the struggles that they see? Like maybe they feel threatened by a personal brand in their company. So they'd had a really good discussion. That one in particular, what you said about feeling threatened, that was so interesting to -hmm. walk through what those common fears are about empowering employees to build a brand, to be a spokesperson, and then flipping that and saying, look at all these benefits. If you do allow that and look at these Mm -hmm. extra skills that your employees develop, then they can bring back in house. And Jordan was a great example of that. She had her personal podcast you know, learned how to be scrappy, how to produce a podcast. And then now she's hosting a podcast uh, for Knowles Precision Devices based Mm -hmm. on all that she learned on her own time. So that was, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it let everybody, it inspired me. I can assume it inspired most people like step out of your comfort zone a little bit. Like, you know, what I got out of it is, you know, so much that other people don't know and just share that advice on like a little bit of a drip campaign and like be authentic and intentional on sharing things that you know so I felt that way I know there was a lot of people out there that were like okay we need to work on our personal brands it cannot hurt (laughs) cannot hurt exactly uh, well, uh, we'll get to this social stuff in just a minute, but then um, we also had a half day, it's kind of an optional extra thing yeah. you could add to your package for half day workshops. And we were first going to have people choose between the two, but they were so popular. Everyone wanted to see both. So we ended up running them back to back. And so mm-hmm. Gorilla 76 presented on uh, measuring marketing. Was it mainly measurement, right? Yes, exactly. And yeah. how did the story? I didn't go to the other one. So we can talk about that first one. But yeah, it was Peyton or not Peyton, Aaron and Grace from Gorilla 76. Um, they do a lot of advertising and a lot of really big campaigns with big budgets. And they talked about how to share your data across this big campaign journey um, to your executives or to your stakeholders. Like maybe um you don't have the right results at the very beginning because you've launched the campaign and you tested. Of course, your stakeholder is thinking, where are my leads right now? I'm spending this money. Like, how how can I prove that this is working? And so they did a really good job of walking through each stage and um, kind of doing like storytelling with the data and like bringing them back to the original goal and making sure they stay grounded. And, oh, you know, the like goal that. is the campaign. Storytelling of- with yeah. data. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I heard there was a a great moment where they separated in the room, uh, separated the room based on what uh, platform you're using. So there was the HubSpot corner and and what else, uh, Pardot or Salesforce. Salesforce, Yeah, Dynamics. That was an excellent moment. So like the workshop was about data, but everyone is receiving their data in different platforms. So HubSpot people, Salesforce people. So for a while, we were broken out into different rooms talking about the different struggles and successes of each HubSpot, each platform, HubSpot or Salesforce or whatever. So I was in the HubSpot category. So I had a great conversation with people who were trying to integrate things with HubSpot and struggling or how do you pass off Um leads and HubSpot to your salespeople. So that was really unique. I actually like stopped and took a bunch of pictures and because it was really unique that people were actually talking to each other and like commiserating with each other on all the platforms. That's just not what you normally see in a marketing conference. Well, kudos to Grace and Aaron to to facilitate that. And mm-hmm. I heard there, I heard some, somebody raise their hand and said, what about Microsoft Dynamics? And the whole room went, Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Conversation which, should be how to integrate. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. No kidding. Uh, which group was the biggest? <laughs> Ooh, it was probably, Pupswell was pretty big and Salesforce was pretty big. Yeah. yeah. That's and then we had, I don't even know some of the others. It was like two people from one, one person from another, and they just had to like cluster together. Hey, there's something uh, that they learned by seeing that, that, oh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on the tool that fewer people are using. There might be a reason why. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Good. Well, well, you know, you and I on that half day both had a lot of event obligations. So I had event obligations while you were at that session, that workshop, mm -hmm. and then I was able to pop into the other one. So I okay. could talk to that. Uh, so the other one was, is, uh, is uh, like raising the level of your content strategy game. I'm, I'm getting it leveling up. That's what it is. Leveling up your content strategy. And, uh, and it was uh, by true marketing. So Lee Chapman and Jennifer Dawkins, two of our senior leaders at the company, and they walk through a framework of how to build a content strategy. And there were lots of, so they had a workbook companion to it. And the idea was that people could leave that session or that workshop with a lot of the starting point to a content topic cluster, the starting point to a marketing dashboard and, yeah. and things like that. So that was pretty neat. Uh, but I will say the most active conversation came from how are you incorporating personas into your mm -hmm. content strategy? And so I said, do, do, can you share some examples of how, and everybody just kind of said, so first, do you have personas? Everybody's hands went up. And then they said, okay, would somebody share how they incorporate personas into their content and like crickets? And mm -hmm. so it became very evident that a lot of people in the room were checking a box with the personas, but they weren't actually actively using them. And so uh, it was cool because then our team started telling all these different stories in which we use them and negative personas and how to automatically assign personas within HubSpot. There were a lot of questions about that. So I think yeah. that was a big win that we didn't expect people to need so much education on. Yeah. Well, and you think about the people like as an agency, you and I work at an agency, so we know the best practices and we can do that correctly all, all day, every day. But if you think about it from the audience's perspective, these people are one to two people in a marketing department and they, they know what they're supposed to do. They took like the first class of like, you should have a market or a buyer persona and then life gets crazy busy and you mm -hmm. are, you don't have it anymore. So it's great to go to an event like this where you're like, okay, I do have my buyer persona. I just need a little nudge and reminder to know exactly how to use it. Because yeah. the, I mean, in, in house is a whole different ball game. Like you've got yeah. so much more tasks yeah. You want to do the right thing, but you have a lot to do. <laughs> I was so lucky when I was in house that we had a 250 person Markham organization. So right, it's a little yeah. bit different. Unusual. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, obviously, uh, one of the biggest benefits wasn't to be found inside a session or workshop. It was just simply getting together as a community, having a few mm -hmm. beers, some, some laughs, some food. Yeah. So tell me about the vibe and what you got out of that part of it. Well, I've been to huge marketing conferences. HubSpot has a marketing conference ca called Inbound. I think I forget like 15,000 people or something. I might be exaggerating, but it's humongous. No, it was well at its peak. I think it was at 18 or 20. So yeah, it, it, yeah. it's come back down from that a little bit. Yeah. Well, and then when you go, um, you, you stick to your team, you go to your sessions, you go party with your team and then you go home and you really, you really have to step out of your comfort zone. If you want to talk to people there, it's not always, it's so big, the scale is so big that you don't really get to make connections. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I was anticipating coming here. It was um, a little more than 200, but I still was not expecting how much camaraderie there was and how many times if you just sit down in one spot, people are introducing themselves. They're talking about, hey, what is your marketing department made up of? Do you have five people? Do you have two people? Are you one person? Oh, okay, what kind of strategy are you focusing on then if you only have that much time? Oh, you also have to put on internal events and that's not really your job. Like everybody was really, really community oriented. They wanted to make connections and meet people and talk about things that we're all struggling with. So I'm getting chills thinking about it because it's just, it's so different. And I think everybody got it, came away with, just like new connections and yeah. people who know the struggle. Yeah.
And then on top of it, we had cool little friendship bracelets. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Why not? That would have been a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who made those? Yeah. Shelby from Kadena's Parts yeah. Solutions made like 120 <laughs> bracelets. Yeah. They, they were, were amazing. Just so many tiny touches that made the event special. Yeah. Well, we couldn't have have hosted this event without the support of our sponsors. And mm -hmm. Casey, you played a yeah. really big role with both sponsors and speakers as there, we gave you this title of concierge, yeah. yes. uh, but there's a lot of details that go into making sure that we promote people appropriately and we have all their materials and they know deadlines and they feel welcome and a part of the event. And I just... You couldn't have done a better job than what you did. It was just mm -hmm. wonderful. So maybe yeah. you could tell, speak a little bit to the sponsors. Yeah. In particular. yeah, I I helped talk or I helped kind of organize all the speakers and the sponsors. So just making sure that they had everything they need, that their presentations were as valuable as possible. Um, and then with the sponsors, obviously we couldn't have put on an event without them. And they were also very unique from a marketing conference perspective. It was, um, I, I'm not going to be able to name all of them, but Global Spec was our premier par partner sponsor and they um, had a presentation. It was excellent. And then stuck around and met some people and then Signal Fire and Windbound were some brand sponsors. They were also fellow agencies, but their owners we're all over the place making connections and really providing advice to people. And when they were asking questions, because they're obviously experts in their field too. So they were yeah. very enthusiastic and just brought everything to the table. They did. And Bridger IO, we can't forget Bridger yes, and John yes. Joyce. You know, everybody took ownership, you know, and part of it and, and brought cool swag. I mean, uh, cool oh yeah, we can't forget. Yeah. When uh signal fire brought they win it, vodka. they win the award, right? A best yes. swag for sure. Yeah. Cherry vodka from Wisconsin and then windbound. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. They brought this super cool there it is. Like, phone holder. Yeah. Holder, but yeah, they just knocked it out of the part and they were so fun to be around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank you again for that. And yeah. um, we are already starting plans for 2025 yeah. and uh, working with the same facility to bring it back to Austin. So we'll mm -hmm. do some announcements in the next couple months, but uh, really excited about that and hoping Casey, you'll continue to be a, a <laughs> critical part in the critical path of success. Yeah. It'd be great. <laughs> Um, if someone blast. wants to learn more about the industrial marketing summit, how can they do that? Yeah, it's industrial marketing summit.com. Super easy. We're going to have more information coming soon. I know we have to flip the, the website right now. It's the old 2024. It's so old, yeah. but, um, we'll have more information being updated soon. Yeah, cool. And there's lots of love and conversation happening on LinkedIn. So the hashtag was, I am summit. Mm -hmm, so if yeah. you guys are curious and, and want to see what the buzz was, you can go search that in LinkedIn and Some FOMO. Yeah. I see a lot of conversations. So, mm -hmm. well, thank you, Casey, again, for everything you yes. did for the event and for coming on and sharing your experience. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks for joining me today on content marketing engineered for show notes, including links to resources, visit truemarketing.com slash podcast. While there, you can subscribe to our blog and our a newsletter and order a copy of my book, Content Marketing Engineer. Also, I would love your reviews on this podcast. So please, when you get a chance, subscribe and leave me your review on your favorite podcast subscription platform. Thanks and have a great day.